I want to continue our study on the mysteries. This one's called the treacherous carnal mind. Let me define that word treacherous. It means to be disloyal, dangerous, not true to allegiance or duty, attended by or involving the possibility of injury, pain, or loss. Now think of this in light of the fall of humanity in the Garden of Eden. Here's a text. I've touched upon this text before, but we want to go a little bit deeper with it. Isaiah chapter 48, verses 7 through 8. They are created, manifested. When? Now. And not from the beginning, or even before the day, when thou heardest them not, that thou should say, Behold, I knew them. Yea, thou heardest not, yea, thou knewest not. Yea, from that time that thine ear was not open, were living out of the fallen corner of mind, and not this mystery of the mind of Christ in your spirit. For I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously, and was called a transgressor, from the womb, like what David said, from my mother's womb was I conceived in sin and shaped in the iniquity of my parent. Now I've touched upon this matter before in this series of the mysteries. It was revealed why the mystery of godliness was hidden from the beginning of created time expressed so well in what the mind of Christ in Isaiah, unaware to him at that time, revealed. We saw how before the fall of Adam and Eve, our father's original intent wasn't hidden and would have unfolded to Adam to his eternal spirit if his soul had not gone rogue and listened to the devil's lie. He comes off all from his spirit. Went with a fallen cold of mind. It was a living soul, but after that, that mind began to die. And whereas the mind goes, so goes the body. That's why death was introduced. He cut himself off from the life source. So all this is coming out in this other video, in this series. Here in this article, this video, I want to reveal a deeper aspect of this matter. Focus on they are created or were to be manifested when? Now. I have another series of videos that develop this matter of the eternal now, along with a series called the eternal day. Each complements the other and brings this mystery once hidden out deeper. That's what I'm saying. Somebody might come upon this one single video and never listen to all these other videos. They're not going to understand what I'm talking about. They'll call heresy. Yeah, if you listen to these other videos, you've been following this series and the other series of videos that develops this, you wouldn't see it as heresy. It starts to make sense. Especially in this one about the mind of Christ, that series explains the difference between a carnal mind and the mind of the human spirit. It's called the mind of Christ. Isaiah goes on to say, and not from the beginning. He's referring to the beginning of the creation of this material world, which were created for the Son of God and the sons of God in Christ. Then goes on to say, even before the day when thou hast heardest them not. In this statement, now hear this, in this statement, we see something that hasn't been presented before. You can ask well, what might that be? Something was hidden even before the fall of humanity, before the fall of Adam in the garden, which reveals how this mystery was always hidden. And its main reason for it being hidden reaches beyond 
and before the fall of Adam and Eve. It was hidden in the now. In other words, before created time, something in the realm of the eternal time was known. It's hidden in the mind of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. No, no human being, no angel of being knew this. It was a mystery hidden. Isaiah then goes on to give a reason why they were hidden from Adam. Lest thou shouldest say, I knew them. Now catch this part. A fallen humanity ever since the, that time of this fall had fall with their fallen mind that they knew what was not only hidden from Adam and Eve, but also of all humanity and the angelic host, this mystery hidden. And not only created time, but also in the realm of the eternal time. Christ wouldn't be, why? Why was it hidden? Always been hidden. Before the manifestation of the sons of God on this world, even before the manifestation of the angelic host, in the mind of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, there's a mystery that gets revealed. It comes out in this video, it comes out in the other videos I brought out. And the question is, why Why would it be hidden? Why would it be why? Why would it be hidden in the eternal realm? Let me say it simple, Peter. We got to keep things simple. Well, here, here's I can simply say it. See if you understand it. Let me say something here and later bring it out. Bring it out why? The question as to why it was hidden in the eternal realm. Here's the answer. An iniquity was found in him, Lucifer. Some of you might know what the religious is going right now. You, you, this is my, my saying is, when was the iniquity found in Lucifer? Before the foundation of the world, in the eternal realm. So some of you might know where this is going. Some of you might think you know, as I stated above, and Isaiah warned us about, that the fall of mind should it say, Behold, I knew them. You, you don't know this. In the carnal mind, eyes have not seen this, nor has ear heard it, nor has entered the deepest part of any man's mind. This mystery. But it gets revealed. The Apostle Paul reveals it. We should know it. We're in that time and age when it's revealed. So, read that again. Some of you might think you know, as I stated above, and Isaiah warned us about that the fallen mind should say, Behold, I knew them. So God kept this mystery hidden. Even when he placed Adam in the garden, it was hidden to men. The fallen carnal mind always thinks it knows. Sucker and sadly many religious minded individuals. Yet apart from the understanding, this matter of the mind of Christ, you hear me stress this over and over to a point people get weary of hearing me say it. Well, don't blame me, blame the Apostle Paul. Go do a uh, search on the word, the mind of Christ, and see who says it the most. It was Paul, who was commissioned to reveal this mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory, the mind of Christ. Yet apart from understanding this matter of the mind of Christ being in our human spirit, which we were all born, cut off from, understand that? When you came to the Lord of Adam, you became a son of man, and you weren't manifest as a son of God, thus you had the carnal mind of a son of man or daughter of man. You didn't have the mind of Christ of your spirit. You were cut off from that. So you wouldn't know this. And you can't claim in your mind that you understand it. Yet apart from understanding this matter of the mind of Christ being a human spirit, which we were all born cut off from, apart from knowing this, you would never know what I or anyone with the same mind knows. It's not Gnostic teaching. It's available for all. You'll find out in a minute. 
Not that it should, not that it could be known by all, for as my series on this minor Christ reveals, this minor Christ being all and in all, clearly brings out what Scripture has revealed. We all could know from the least to the greatest. Paul, <laughs> Paul expressed that in the book of Hebrews. He was so amazed at this discovery that the mind of Christ was in Jew and Gentile, all, and the potential to, to override this carnal mind and activate the mind of Christ in our spirit amazed him. And he thought, one day, all will know him from the least to the greatest. And we won't have to say no to the Lord because we all would know from the least to the greatest. He had that great hope. Christ in you, the hope of glory, Jew and Gentile, who was available to us all. But since that revealing, that mystery has been covered over for the last 2,000 years. There were those sporadically, every now and then, throughout the course of human history and church history, there were those that would discover it. But it wouldn't be discovered without it being put down again, overrode by secular and religious doctrine. In this series, it came out that the hub of all the mysteries that the Apostle Paul was commissioned to reveal is called the mystery of godliness. He even said, great is the mystery of godliness. Why? It embraces all the mysteries that he was to reveal. Things that were always there get hidden since time began. So it came out in this as the hub of the mysteries. The Apostle Paul commissioned to reveal is called the mystery of godliness. With the mystery being, here's the mystery, which gets explained. People want to hear it simple. Here's the simple answer. What was the mystery of godliness? We were to be manifested as sons of God, and not sons and daughters of men. That's the mystery. I have once seen this being only on the part of Adam and Eve's fall. But it was kept a mystery. But here we see that this matter of this mystery ran deeper and was hidden even before this fall. He got touched upon in my uh, video on Adam feeling lonely. The mystery of loneliness comes out. You see, go back, go back to see it. in this series. The mystery of loneliness. Adam felt alone in the garden. Why would he feel alone? He got touched upon in my videos on Adam feeling lonely. I questioned this in that video. Why would he feel lonely? You would think that having the mind of Christ in his spirit could have known what's being revealed, like now what's being revealed right now. If he had this mind of Christ, why didn't he know this? Here's where we get to see it in deeper. I'm going to ask this question, how so? Is it possible that the sons of God Eternally begotten, as we discover in that series, eternality of the human spirit. It wasn't created as we think created. The human spirit is eternal. The body was created, and the material world was created. Was, the spirit is eternal. Is it possible that the sons of God, eternally begotten, were tainted by this iniquity found in Lucifer in the eternal realm and spread to one third of the angelic host? Now understand this, not that I believe, as some have taught, a pre-fall of the sons of God. There's a girl, woman named Bertha Doodle. She long since died, and now she knows differently now. She was claiming that God was telling her that all humanity fell in heaven, and they were sent here as punishment. But I, got, I have a video on that, that debunks all her teachings. That isn't the case. 
we didn't fall in heaven and be sent here to be punished. You know I mean, yeah, I say I'm hesitating. Why? Because I feel that now I have to stop, get off track, and explain that. No, if I think of, I'll put it in the link here, which I describe what I mean by that. Her teachings and how it's easily debunked. Adam was created good in the king, in the garden. Well, let me go on because I, 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 that will distract me. All right. Not that I believe this is a son of Torah, a pre-fall of the sons of God, birth of Deuteronomy's teaching. See it only as being infected by this. Without seeing this expressed in created time in the Garden of Eden. With Adam feeling lonely at first because of this infection. And then later, after his fall, feeling naked with Eve and himself hiding himself from God. There's so much to that feeling nakedness. He gets past them standing there in their naked bodies. They felt naked in spirit soul. Cut off from their spirit. They were crowned with glory. That's going to be coming out. Crowned with glory. Comes out in the book of Hebrews chapter 1. We'll be getting in that. Think of this in light of the following text that reveals Naked I came into this world, and naked I would leave. We would leave naked. We came naked, we would leave naked if this mystery isn't discovered. You got to discover this mystery. You're a son of God. If you're in this influence of being a son or daughter of man, you're naked. Cut off from your spirit. And we feel that way. That you can sear your conscience to the point where you don't have that conscious sensation of guilt. Why do you feel consciously guilty if you walk down the street naked? That you override that, sear your conscience with a hot iron, end up in a nudist colony somewhere as you're walking down the street naked. People see people doing that. Why do you feel naked? You ever ask yourself that question? It runs deeper than you think. Here is now Job chapter one verse twenty one, and said, "Naked I, that naked came I, out of my mother's womb." You know that? Naked I came out of my mother's womb. Remember what Isaiah said up here? You're treacherous from the womb. And said, "Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither." The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job and all his trials who was stripped of all his earthly possessions, recognition, prestige, with his wife, his soulmate, helpmate, telling him, this curse God died. Get it over with. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I got a whole video that comes in, it gets in there as to why this whole situation with Job took place. Simply said, without going through my long videos about this, he got his eyes off the eternality of the eternal realm and began to see this realm as eternal. It's not. It's temporal. It's the temporal world. If you lose sight, of the new creation and the eternal realm, you have to be weaned of this world. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, I say I, I get off. I would get off subject matter here. You have to go. If I think of, I'll post that video too. It gets in about this situation with Job. Going on to I, uh, Ecclesiastes five fifteen. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labors which he may carry away in his hands. Now, saying that, the whole book, you have to understand the book of Ecclesiastes. The whole book of Ecclesiastes is written from the standpoint of a fallen man and a carnal mind. 
psalm was taken to carnal mind, trying to find an answer to the, to the carnal mind. Apart from God. That's what the whole book of Ecclesiastes is about. And he says it's a futile effort to do that. They go independent from hearing from God. He ends up the book of that book of Ecclesiastes, he ends up saying it. Here to sum of the matter. To the writing of many books, of the opinions and ideas of people and the carnal flesh. Here to sum of the matter. Hear God's commands and obey. We're talking about the Ten Commandments. Hear God speak to you. Psalm was hearing that anything that made his life worthwhile, he made a reference to this in his writing. The book of Proverbs, the book of Ecclesiastes, was the ability to hear God, his Father. Even though it being a mystery at the time, he could hear from God. He didn't understand Well, I said, see how I could get off and shoot off you on that. That series of videos on Ecclesiastes. I'm working on that. It's coming out. It's called From Solomon's Stairs. Years ago, I put out, I wrote a book. It's called From Solomon's Stairs. Never put it out in print. It's expressing the view and perspective of the book of Ecclesiastes. It's a powerful book. So I can't go off on that right now. Let me just go on. But this is giving me some idea of what I mean by naked. Crowned with glory and honor. Now we hear this up out of the book of Psalms and the book of Hebrews. Psalm chapter 8 verse 5. For thou hast made him manifest him. Adam was first manifesting. A little lower than the angels. People wonder why. I thought sons of God were above the angels and that they were subservient to humanity. Well, here, this is bringing out that mystery of it being hidden, even at his placement in the garden. For thou made him, manifest him, a little lower than the angels. We'll find out why. Because of iniquity. And crowned him with glory and honor. Now this crowning of glory and honor, I don't think Adam really understood it. He came here with full function of his spirit functioning through him. Unaware. It was his spirit through him. But uh, let me read on you, this is what I mean. Hebrews uh, 2.7 brings it out a little deeper. Thou made him a little better than the angels, repeating what the psalmist has said. Thou crowned him with glory and honor. Now catch this part. And did set him over the works of thy hand. Remember, earth moans and moans, waiting for this manifestation of the sons of God. It briefly saw it. When Adam was first placed here, yeah, Adam was unaware of it. If he knew, he wouldn't have fell. But he didn't know. He says, people say, well, you're confusing. No, it's not confusing. If you follow the rest of these videos, up to this point, you'd be saying, ah, oh, now I see what you're talking about. I, I, I can't stop doing it. I make that mistake that I'm going back trying to go back over old ground. If you want to know these things, Believe you me, apart from me, and follow all my videos, you could do the same thing that I'm doing. Ask your father, and he would give you the same thing to the same mind that's in me, it's in you. The mind of Christ. Now your self-righteous, self-willed, religious mind, or definitely your second mind, not going to understand it. But the many of religious mind can't understand it. So because they can't understand it, because they think they know it all, with their religious efforts in mind to try to understand this book, the Bible, and themselves and God, they're not willing to lose all of that. So they see what I'm saying is heresy. Yeah, believe you me, I have run across people. I won't name names because people, I'm not going to do that. You can go to my video, look at the comment area, you, you'll, know, you'll find them. They knew this stuff. 
that I'm, I'm bringing out here. All my asking God things. They knew this before we met. And they're rejoicing. There's a fellowship of the mystery. That's what the fellowship of the mystery is. They really have this fellowship of mystery. We're not talking about food, fun, fellowship in an institutional church. That, that idea of, of fellowship is so measure of his carnal flesh. We have a fellowship of our spirits. We leap when you meet these people. I did that this lady, as I mentioned in one of my videos here, went to my son's uh, birthday party for his daughter. And one of his friends, that was a friend of his wife, started talking with me. And it came up in general conversation about being forced. And he got sharing things, and I'm saying, how did he know all this? I never talked to him before. Well, we sat there and we couldn't, couldn't talk, stop the conversation. We were rejoicing. And people looking at us, walking past us like, what's wrong with them two? I'd ask my son or my daughter-in-law, who was that guy? Oh, he's one of my religious friends. She, see, they see, her, see him as religious. But he's, he's, he's far, he's 180 degrees from religious people. Religious people would have sat there and argued with what I was sharing. He was sharing to me things I already knew, and I was sharing things to him he already knew. That's the mind of Christ. And he gets past the dead leaven. He was sharing how he's trying to share this to an institutional setting. I told him, good luck. <laughs> I've tried for years. You can do so much, and after a while they reject you. They're stuck with their Baptist views, Pentecostal views, Catholic views, their denominational doctrines. And uh, I won't go there. That comes out in my series about the cold house assembly and the mind of Christ. But it's, it's powerful. This crowning with glory and honor. And why it wasn't manifested or known by him though he was manifesting it, unawares. That's why the devil could sit there and tell me, look, you don't need God. See that forbidden tree of the knowledge, wisdom knowledge of good and evil that God told you you can't go there? Like I said in my series, get past this idea of a tree with an apple on there. It's much deeper than that. That's accumulating knowledge, going independent from God, figuring things out for yourself, effort. Taking your fallen carnal soul, cut off from your human spirit that has this mind of Christ, and in that mind of Christ is the totality and wisdom and knowledge of God that the Holy Spirit would have worked out of Adam, that today, when the mystery be being revealed, works out of your spirit as you let stuff in your carnal, self will religious mind go. Then you start seeing things that makes it sound like heresy. Isaiah mentions it again later on in his writings. But I will show you a new thing. Will you not know it, he says. Not with your corner mind. Your corner mind will never understand this stuff. You will know it in your human spirit. Like I said, the Old Testament was a mystery to them. Not till later was it revealed. And when in this series, you shows why it was God kept this mystery. Because the, the devil knew it. He would take this fallen mind of men and deal with that mystery in the treacherous way that he has. To the point people don't want to pursue it. You hear some religious idea of the mind of Christ, but you don't get expressed like I and these few other people that are getting this. Apart from either one of us teaching one another, we're being taught of our Father through our spirits. And as we cleanse this mind of our second religious opinions, he replaces it and renews our mind. And the mind of Christ knows the mind of Christ. I got a video on that. So, let me see where I want to, where to leave off out here. This crowning and glory 
in humanity, Jew and Gentile, is this Christ in you, the hope of glory. This mind of Christ found in your human spirit. Adam and Eve were unaware of this when they were first manifested in the garden. Not until later, here's how they find out. But then it was a mystery. I still didn't understand. Here's how they find out. Adam and Eve were unaware of this when they were first manifested in the garden. Not until later, when they fell and were cut off from their spirit, it was then, with them going with their fallen soul's mind, cut off its life source, it was then that this human begins to die and soul no longer was a living soul. With the mind of their soul dying, their bodies began to die. Yet this mystery of this mind of Christ was a mystery to them and was hidden in them, later on revealed through symbols to keep it hidden until the fullness of the time. Remember, Jesus manifested in parables, hidden from the wise and prudent, revealed unto those in Christ, later to be manifested as in Christ. To keep it hidden until the fullness of the time when the Lamb of God, a symbol, become a person, would be manifested to take away the sin or sin nature of the fallen soul's mind that surrounded the seed in our spirit like the outer husk of a natural seed that when it falls to the ground and dies, the real seed hidden in this husk is manifested. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The mystery hid from man, from devil, to be revealed the mystery. It comes out in this series that the devil had knew what, what Jesus was going to, about to accomplish and reveal and manifest. He would not allow them to be crucified. Yet since that mystery has been revealed, all he can do is treacherously deal with it. Oh, so at this point, that's my notes. I want to get past the notes and sum up what we've said so far. Reading the definition of the word treacherous, also that text from Isaiah 48. Treacherous, think of it, disloyal. Adam and Eve, the first couple, disloyal. The danger, the warning. Don't act independent of God. Wait to your spirit. And that righteousness that's locked up in the mind of Christ in your spirit would have unfolded to you, but they didn't do that. Nor have we. We're not sufficient in our fallen core mind to evaluate anything but we do it every day. Secular and religious people do it. We don't heed the warning. Not true to allegiance or duty. What was their duty? To subdue the earth, land, sea, and the air. We're trying to do it this day and age with human efforts. But independent from God, we're doing a lousy job at it. And earth is moaning, growing, waiting for this manifestation of the sons of God, and it rarely sees it. It saw it when Jesus walked this earth. The Son of God manifested as a Son of Man, unfallen, virgin born. He was what an Adam could have done, could have been, if he not fallen. What matter man is, is they're saying of him? <laughs> he was what Adam could have been. He's the second Adam unfallen. He calms the seas, raises the dead, heals the sick. 
I mean, you know all the miracles we call of Jesus. Attended by or involving the possibility of injury. That fall has injured all, not only Adam and Eve, but all humanity, all that was born through their loins. The injury is vast, deep, causing a lot of pain and loss. The fall of humanity. Isaiah 48. They are created. And don't get hung up on that word created. That's the biggest uh, the Hebrew word bara and asa to create or make. We get hung up on that word. You see that? I'm not going to go into the Hebrew language to try to prove this. They are manifested now. God eternally, eternally had a desire to have a son likened to his own son, eternally first preeminent begotten son, and in that eternal desire, he always had those sons, and he was the manifest of those sons, and of that eternal realm, in a maturely created world, and it would call it the kingdom of heaven, manifesting the kingdom of God on earth. Never happened. It's going to happen. It's coming. During the millennial reign of Christ. That's just the model. Getting my series on the millennium. And on my video series, The Kingdom of the Continuous, you won't find this on, on the web or on YouTube. You type in the word, The Kingdom of the Continuous. You know what you'll find? What the Father has shared to this vessel. No one else is seeing it. Why? Go to that series and find out why. Not unique to me, because you know it. Everybody can know it. It's coming up out of the mind of Christ. It's in my vessel, this vessel. It's in you. And you're calling it heresy. You're the one who got the answer there, not me. I do, well, you think I, I think I enjoy putting this out there, getting these labels. They are created, manifested now, eternal now. Not from the beginning. This created world. All this was hidden before the beginning of this created world, even before the day when thou knewest, heardest them not. That's how I should say, behold, I knew them. You don't know nothing. What we know next to God, nothing. That eternal mind, we can't imagine it. Though he's complete, it says he changes not. We have to change. And turn around, give up this carnal mind to gain this mind of Christ that's eternal. And there's this Father and not some father of your flesh. And not from the beginning, even before the day when thou heardest them not, lest thou should say, Behold, I knew them. You knew nothing in your core mind. Your eyes have not seen it, nor has your ear ever heard it. It has to come up out of this mind of Christ in you. If you don't know what that is, if you think it's some religious idea, you're missing the point. Yea, thou heardest not, Thou knewest not. Yea, from that time that thine ear was not open of the Spirit, hearing the voice of your Father through your Spirit. And you were living out of a fallen corner of mind, you inherited through Adam. And not this mystery of the mind of Christ in your Spirit as a Son of God. For I knew thou wouldest deal very treacherously and what called transgressor from the womb. He's proved his point. They have. Paul reveals the mystery. Got videos on that. What happened after the revealing of the mystery? The carnal mind and the devil 
has treacherously dealt with it. And keep many away from it, or distort it as some shallow religious idea. For I knew that I would deal very treacherously and was called a transgressor from the womb. In me that is in my flesh, there dwells no good thing. Carnal mind is not going to say this. Secular or religious has to come through the mind of Christ that's locked up in your spirit. So, so much more to this. And there will be more. I, I want more. I said, Father, I want to know more. And there's a few out there that want to know more too. And your carnal mind will scratch his head and not understand this when you give up trying to figure it out with a carnal mind and allow weight to your spirit, to the mind of Christ in your spirit, and you will get it from your Father. Let him teach you. Not me. I'm not your teacher. Nor is any other man. They can tutor and guide you to what? To the voice of your Father, to the mind of Christ in your spirit. That's what they should be doing. You wouldn't have all these denominations and differences of opinion. So let me end on that. God bless you.